Now, when it comes to nepenthes, you do have options. You have the species, which we'll talk a little less about today than we actually will talk about hybrids. Hybrids are the ones I want to highlight. The benefit of having hybrids, specifically to the topic of long-lasting pitchers, is that growers are able to mix uh, traditionally more finicky pitchers, pitchers that are more soft, like a sanguinea, with something more hardy, like a truncata. And the general rule of thumb when it comes to nepenthes, not always the case, but the general rule, the tougher the pitcher, the longer lasting it will be. Now, there is a caveat to that, and that is the tougher the pitcher, normally the longer it takes to grow. So it is gonna take a little bit of patience, but it is rewarding. And so the first plant I'm gonna talk about not only produces very tough pitchers, but also produces a profuse amount of pitchers. And in that in that uh, perspective, I do believe it's one of the best bang for your bucks pitchers that you can get for long lasting pitchers. So without further ado, let's turn the camera around and let's show you the first plant. So it's a little hard for me to get in there, but as you can see, I'm sure all of you could expect this was coming. This is Brigziana, which is Lolii by Vincicosa. Absolutely a phenomenal plant for any grower to have at any level of experience. Now it is a perfect plant for a beginner grower, but as you can see, the Lowy on this produces these tough, hardy pitchers that are all like semi-woody and they last a long time. And the Ventricosa provides for a profusely pitchering plant that produces a ton of basils. Now the combination of the two gives you absolutely gorgeous pitchers. Uh, the sky's the limit as far as the hybrids on this, but there are three main hybrids out there, but uh, any Lowy I Ventricosa mix will get you this. Absolutely gorgeous. Now, if you want a really large form, there's one called the succubus that produces pitchers just like this, but are extra, extra large, absolutely gorgeous plant. Um, it gives you almost the same look as like a low AI campanulata, but for a much, uh, much more lower, much lower price. So first plant is, uh, if you're new to the growing, maybe new to you, but for most people it would be kind of a no brainer, but Briggsiana might be the top pick for longest lasting pitchers. Uh, and that pitchers that uh, are plant that produces a profuse amount. Let's go on to the next one. For the next one, I'm gonna bring up Truncata. Now, if you've heard my other videos, I recommend Truncata as a new growing plant or new grower plant. I recommend it for anybody of all experience levels, but uh, you don't hear about Truncata being a plant for newer growers. And so what I've touched on in those videos is that it's a very forgiving plant that can dry out quite a bit uh, before anything will actually go south. It is very epiphytic. Uh, and so it is highly tolerant of dry, uh, dry periods. Now, the other cool thing about Truncata is that their pitchers are also very forgiving and they last a very, very long time. This pitcher here has been on here for, oh, I don't even know, a couple months now, and it is still just as fresh as the day it opened. Um, remember what I said about the, the hardiness, the toughness of the pitchers? Truncata pitchers are very, very tough, very strong, and they provide that in their hybrids too. So I'll go over some Truncata hybrids as well, but for the most part, the good rule of thumb is if it's got truncata in it, there's a good chance it's gonna be a very hardy pitcher and one that's gonna last a while for you. So not only do I recommend this as a starter plant for any new growers uh, and of course any experienced growers, but I also recommend it as one of those plants that's gonna have pitchers that last a very long time for you. All right, so this next big beautiful pitcher is a Hamakua by Truncata Giant. I got this one from Todd's Tropicals, if you are interested. Now, remember what I said about Truncata and their hybrids, they produce very long lasting uh, pitchers. This one, Hamakua, is a Lelani Nepenthes hybrid, and then the Truncata Giant is what's giving it its size. Um, this is a little harder plant to find, but like I said, Todd at Todd's Tropicals has it, um, but it does produce large, large pitchers. This is actually still small at 13 inches. It will get up to 18 plus. Um, but these pitchers will last a very, very long time. The one in the back there has been going for several months uh, and is still just as fresh. It gets this yellow color, comes out bright, bright green, uh, but within in just a matter of about a week, it turns this yellow and it'll stay that way. But I highly recommend this plant. A little harder to get a hold of, but uh, very good uh, uh, addition to any collection. Um, it likes a lot of light. So if you get a lot of light, that's why I've got it right underneath my um, um, Facetta lights, they will produce big pictures for you. So let's look at another plant. So I was able to get this one pulled out and it's just peering over. Now, I'm gonna highlight both this one and this one that basically look exactly the same. Then one uh, furthest back is a Nepenthe Caesar, which I, if I'm not mistaken is Merliana by Truncata. And this is Nepenthes Brutus, which is Truncata by Merliana. So essentially the same plant, they're just uh, back crossed differently. 
Um, again, this is one of those plants with the truncata um, provenance. It will produce uh, big, 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 beautiful pitchers that are very, very hardy. Uh, these are very tiny for this size of this plant. This plant will end up producing pitchers that are 18 plus size pitchers, absolutely enormous and can eat rats uh, if you so choose to feed them. I'm not gonna do that, but uh, you could do that and it would do just fine. Now, uh, these can be a little bit more of an expensive plant. The Caesars will run you probably about $150, $200. Uh, I normally don't like to spend that much money on plants, but uh, I have been very, very pleased with these very easy growers. I thought they were gonna be a little bit difficult, especially with the Merliana, uh, but they have been absolutely a dream to grow. Very, very easy growers, and so I highly recommend them. They are a little bit more pricey and a little bit beyond the $100 budget that I like to stick with, um, but so far I have been very impressed with them, very happy, uh, very easy to acclimatize, and they just grow uh, absolutely gorgeous pictures. This is the Caesar back here, and then this is the Brutus. So let's look at some more. All right, so this one is uh, quickly becoming one of my favorites. It's a, a relatively cheaper plant. It's Ventricosa by Bongzo by Merliana. And uh, what I love about this one is it gets absolutely woody pitchers, rock solid pitchers. And so um, this is the uh, intermediate. It's going into upper pitchers, but the lower pitchers look like giant coffee cups, coffee mugs rather, very, very hearty. This thing has been on here for several months and it doesn't look like it has aged a single day. So absolutely a great plant. I got this one from Todd's Tropicals again. Uh, I think it cost me about $45 or something like that. Well within that $100 budget and it will give you a big bang for your buck. Now, a little a word of whatever about this plant is it does take a while to get acclimated to its environment and it will not picture for a while. So I thought it was just mine, but I have friends that also have it that have the same experience. But once it does start picturing, it will picture profusely. It's got several uh, pictures coming on now, and then it's got a couple of these. Oh, that was my finger. But um, overall, absolutely fantastic plant, super easy grower, highly recommended uh, for anybody. Next up is Nepenthes Talented Tower. Now this plant does take a while to grow. This one is from Predatory Plants, and it is a complex hybrid that has a lot of really cool uh, lineage in it. It's got Truncata, it's got Fipiata, it's got a ton, Northiana, a lot, a lot of cool stuff in it. And the pictures are absolutely stunning, and they last absolutely forever. This is probably one of the longest lasting picture plants uh, as far as picture lasting that I have. Um, it does take a while for them to produce pictures of any good size, but I will tell you that they're absolutely stunning. And, uh, ab and I keep saying absolutely, but I can't recommend this plant enough. Again, this is from Predatory Plants, and it's something they normally keep in stock, so it should be easy to get, and it was very cheap. Now, it was considerably smaller than this, but I think I paid $25, $30 for them, something like that. Very, very cheap. Uh, well worth the purchase, and if you got time and patience, it uh, will grow absolutely gorgeous plants for you. So let's talk about some plants that I don't have in my collection that make very good long lasting pitchers. First up would be Loei. Loei will produce very, very hardy pitchers that will last a very long time. Now the caveat to Loei is it can be very finicky that I've heard and very uh, uh, temperamental when it comes to environmental changes. Now I do have people that have grown them and said they're not as difficult as people say. So there might be some negative hype around that, but Loei, if you do decide to grow, it will produce very, very strong, uh, very woody pitchers, especially their upper pitchers. Campanulata is another one that will give you sort of mid-range. Now the Campanulata pitcher themselves aren't that strong, but they hybridize very well and produce a lot of sturdiness to their plants. So it is an option for you, especially when it's mixed with like a low AI, you get a little bit of that and you basically get a Briggsiana, but a much larger one that's uh, just absolutely gorgeous. Um, some other options are Moriliana. They tend to be by themselves aren't that strong, but they hybridize very well and they produce a lot of sturdy growth to their pitchers. And then lastly, Rob Cantleyi. Now, Rob Cantleyi, when it's hybridized, produces very strong, stable plants and stable pitchers. Rob Cantleyi by itself can be very temperamental to grow and is very exacting in the conditions that it needs. So it by itself, I mean, you can grow it if you've got experience and maybe even as a beginner. I don't recommend them for beginner, to be honest with you. Uh, and depending on who you ask, it's a hybrid itself. I tend to believe what Mr. Rob Cantley says, and it's a a plant all its own, but I do know in the new book, Stuart McPherson talks about it being a hybrid, uh, but that is for another another talk, another debate. 
uh, but it does make for a wonderful plant if you can grow it and you have the right conditions it will produce very long lasting gorgeous absolutely stunning pictures all right everybody i hope you've enjoyed this video and this gives you some ideas on what pitcher plants to buy now one more thing before i go i didn't mention and it's worth mentioning is a ventricosa now a ventricosa doesn't necessarily have extremely long lasting pitchers but they do last quite a lot while and it is a very profuse pitcherer -er. and so for that i want to give that an honorable mention and say ventricosa for as easy of a grower it is might be a great option specifically for beginner growers that you want to get those plants that produce a lot of pitchers and that are going to last for a moderate range of time they make a great plant I hope you've enjoyed this video. There's certainly way more plants that we could cover, but I don't want this uh, video to go on and on and on. If you have any ideas or any suggestions of plants that I might have missed, go ahead and leave a comment and let me know what those are. I would love to get that conversation started up with everybody, uh, not only between me and you, but then also everybody in the group and on the channel. As always, I hope you have a wonderful day and a wonderful week, and I'll see you soon. What's up everybody, CHM Carnivores here. I hope you're having a wonderful day and a wonderful week. Now, why do we collect Nepenthes? Now, a lot of it do it for conservation, but the other part is because we love those beautiful pictures they produce, whether they're very small or very large or very unique in shape, we love those pictures. A picture plant without its pictures as well, just a plant. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to get the longest life expectancy you can out of these pictures. It is nature that they will die off, but there are some trips, tips and tricks that you can do to ensure that they will last as long as possible. So I'm gonna focus in on this beautiful uh, truncata. This is a uh, talented tower. And one of the reasons this is what I was talking about, that the, the pictures on this will last so long, is it has a complex hybrid here, but it has truncata in it, it has fibiata in it, it has a lot of those very tough uh, pictures qualities that you would get, and so it's gonna last a while. But one of the key benefits, or, or one of the key important things to a Nepenthes pitcher's longevity is ongoing ambient humidity. Now, in this grow tent, it is fairly easy for me to keep things at an ambient humidity, a very high ambient humidity, rather. Uh, and I realize that is not always the case for every grower. And so here, look at here's a truncata, that's that patient, uh, by J, uh, JB by patient. However, it is not all lost. If you don't have the, the ability to have a grow tent, that is okay. There are some things that you can do to help the longevity of your pitcher. Uh, first thing you can do is, let's say you grow this inside on a windowsill, you can get a tray and on that tray, place a egg crate or some sort of item that will keep the pitcher uh, pot above the water line and you place the pitcher pot in that uh, on that tray or on that object so it's out of the water and as the water evaporates it will help to keep the ambient temperature high the second thing you can do is get a humidifier that will help the temperature or excuse me the ambient humidity stay up now i realize that is not always ideal especially in an in-home environment humidifiers can be good but they can raise concerns so i understand that the last thing is what's called a wicking mat. So it's a mat that you put underneath your plants and, uh, and it's, as long as it's a little bit damp, it will provide ongoing moisture to the media. And that won't, that won't directly impact the longevity of the pitcher as in keeping the pitcher ambient uh, humidity higher, but it will keep the, uh, the plant healthier and more hydrated so it won't start dropping its pitchers faster. So humidity is step one in ensuring a long lasting pitcher these plants, whether growing uh, in the subtropical climates or growing in the mountain forest or all the places they grow, one thing is for sure, other than a few very rare cases, they like humidity, but not all is lost. It's easy to get. Now I get a lot of questions. Uh, is humidity, I've, I heard they need 80% humidity. That's not the case. When I say humidity, take that with a grain of salt. That is all relative. So you can get these plants to grow just fine and keep long lasting pitchers and humidity around 40 to 50 percent when you're inside your home it will just take time for them to acclimate and that's where getting a tougher pitcher like a truncata comes into a play there and a brigsiana will help you out for that now let's talk about some other things that you can do so let's say that you don't have the ability to get a humidifier and can't exactly afford to do the things like a wicking mat which can be a little expensive or any of those other things that I mentioned, um, there is still hope for you. And that brings us to the next point. And that is you can get a misting sprayer bottle and spray 
the pitchers themselves as they're developing and throughout the life cycle of that pitcher. Now, understand with the Nepenthes, what they want to do is they use their plant, their pitchers obviously to gather nutrients. But if they are in a state of shock, let's say they're getting too dry, they're going to drop those pitchers because it requires a lot of energy to keep them around. So the way that you can bypass this is trick the plant is to spray those pitchers as they're developing so that they inflate and develop correctly, but then also continue to spray them on the outside so that you help them to continue to stay malleable and stay fresh. Now, this isn't gonna guarantee a forever pitcher, but it will uh, elongate the lifespan of that pitcher, which brings me to the third point. This next option, I will say, use with a grain of salt, and I will tell you why. So, one thing you can do, especially if you're getting your pitchers brand new in from a, 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 a supplier, it might be that the pitchers themselves have lost the fluid inside, or maybe you just want to top off the fluid. You can use distilled water and top off the fluid inside the pitcher. Simply put it in there and fill it up to about halfway. Now, there is a caveat to this. There are enzymes in these pitchers that help break down the food. Uh, if you dilute it too much, let's say if I was to fill this thing all the way up, I'm going to very much dilute the pitcher's ability to uh, eat or break down its food. Um, but if you're looking at it specifically, I'm going to show you a plant down here in just a minute. If you're looking at it specifically for keeping the beauty of the plant, that will help in that respect. Now, I came down here for a second. I wanted to show you, even though it's upside down, you see how this pitcher is starting to go brown in the middle? That is because before it went upside down, there is still fluid in here. So the pitcher, as the fluid evaporates and dries up, the pitcher will start to die off, or just in general, when the pitcher gets older, it will start to die off. But uh, the fluid is in about the bottom 50% uh, percentile of this plant. And so that is why that is still green. Now that this is turned upside down, this will begin to dry out fairly quickly. Uh, and that is just a good example of how nature is showing if you keep fluid in those pitchers, they will last longer. And so we can emulate that by simply adding water to the pitchers. Again, if you're wanting to use the pitchers for what they've uh, been uh, purposely used for, which is feeding, you want to be careful doing this process. Now, what you can do, and I've talked about in other videos, is you can use a pitcher like this that's on its way out to do the feeding. That way, if you do dilute too much of the more uh, nicer, more beautiful, newer pitchers, you're not going to impact the pitcher plant's ability to eat. Let's talk about the next point. When it comes to Nepenthes, keeping the, uh, the pitcher moist is just the first step. If you keep the plant too moist, you're going to run the risk of rot or mold, and which will kill off the pitcher just as fast as if it was drying out. But there is hope. Now, you can't see it off camera, but I'm sure you can hear it right here is a fan. Part of uh, Nepenthes is balancing moisture with airflow. Airflow does not mean a lower ambient humidity. As a matter of fact, you can have both and be just fine. Airflow simply does what it says and it takes that ambient humidity and it moves it around so it's not sitting stagnant on the pitcher. This is very important. If you have a smaller setup, you could use an oscillating fan or you can even use, if you have a terrarium, I've seen the computer uh, uh, fans that, uh, be used and it does fantastic. So you don't have to blow these plants away, right? You don't have to have all this wind uh, just enough wind to keep that ambient humidity going so that it stays humid in here, but it doesn't go to the point where they're stagnant. It gets super, super sopping wet and you lose your pitchers, which brings me to the next point. Why am I showing you a wall? So I don't want to show the lights themselves because that would be terrible for your eyes. But uh, the next key to a healthy Nepenthes plant in general, but specifically a long lasting pitcher is plenty of light. It's very important that you give these plants the light that they need and you follow their light um, uh, needs to a T. Now, a lot of the hybrids specifically, but even some species are very forgiving with light, but in general, you wanna provide them a good amount of light, not only for good growth, but also for longevity of the pitchers. They will hold on to their pitchers, but like I said before, if they start getting stressed because they don't have enough light, they're assuredly going to drop those pitchers in order to conserve energy and bring all their focus and just staying alive. 
So light is very, very important. You do not want to um, shortchange the Nepenthes on light, humidity, and airflow. So let's talk about some other topics on this and then wrap up this video. So let's say that you've done all the things that we've talked about in this video. You've provided plenty of humidity, you've gotten the airflow, you've got the bright, beautiful lights, everything's working fine, and your plant still isn't producing pictures. Or if it does produce pictures, they, they die out very fast. What does that mean? Are you doing something wrong? Now it's important to understand that Nepenthes can be finicky and they, are, they have personalities of their own. There are a few things where the plant will decide to not put its energy in pitcher production, or it might shortchange your pitcher production and produce smaller ones or no pitchers at all. And so, or they'll die off faster. Some of the reasons for this could be it's producing a basil. So a lot of times if I see my plant stop producing pitchers, produce smaller pitchers, or maybe kill the pitchers off sooner, I will check for a basil, along with things like, is the soil too dry? Is the area too, uh, not right for them? And so a lot of times you'll find if those other things check out that your plant is putting all of its energy in producing a basil, which for long-term growth is awesome. And even though pitchers are beautiful, amazing, we all want them, I would rather have the extra plant with the basil. So one thing to take in consideration there. The second thing to take in consideration is have you had a change in the environment? Have you moved the plant recently? Is it a new purchase? Nepenthes, specifically uh, the larger ones, take time to get used to their environment. They like to get nice and cozy in their environment and they enjoy being uh, and having that sustainable environment. If you change that, they might sulk a little bit and drop their pictures or may not produce any pictures for a while. That is perfectly fine. I have my one plant here is Ventricosa Bongso by Marilliana that did not produce any pictures for me for at least two months. It did produce a basil, but it did not produce any pictures. Now that it got settled in, now that it's grown that basil, it is picturing profusely. So sometimes you gotta look at the whole context to figure out what is going on with your plant. So all these steps that I gave you in this quick video will help to ensure that you get the most longevity for your money for these pictures. Now there are other things to take into consideration. If there's any pest issues that will hinder the ability of the pictures lasting longer, there's a lot of things. And if you do have questions, if you followed all these tips in this guideline and you're still having issues, please do not hesitate to, uh, to ask me a question on Instagram, ask me in a comment, and I try my best to get to you as, as absolutely fast as I can. And I will work for you to, to get that answer for you. If I don't know it, I will research it and I will ask some of my buddies in the business and see if we can get the um, right answer for you. The biggest thing, biggest thing I want to address is if you're having anxiety about it, let it go. Part of uh, growing Nepenthes is enjoying the pictures. Um, sometimes, like I said, they have their personalities. They necessarily won't grow when you want them to. They'll do their own thing. It, they'll sulk for a little bit. They take time and that is okay. It is a journey, specifically when it comes to Nepenthes. A lot of these plants will live for a very long time, and so they are going to take their time and grow the way that they see to grow, the way that they've developed over the last 60 million years or so. I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, I hope you have a wonderful day and a wonderful week. I'll see you soon.